Maxine Waters is one of the Trump administration's loudest and most persistent critics. She is beloved on the left, not for the clarity of her arguments. She doesn't really make coherent arguments. But because of her certainty, Maxine Waters has no doubt about anything she says. She knows for a certainty that she is right. How does she know that? Because God told her so. There you have it. Maxine Waters isn't really a political figure anymore. She is a theologian, and that's why she fits in so perfectly on the modern left, which has become a kind of religious sect. The point isn't to convince voters anymore. It's to convert heretics and burn witches. If you're wondering why it's so hard to argue with progressives, this is why. They know before you utter a single word that they are virtuous and you are sinful. End of conversation. It's like debating a Hare Krishna. You won't get far. In some ways, it's the story of the show every night, and it's also exposed in great detail in the new book, Ship of Fools, which is coming out in October. You can order it now if you like. It explains a lot. That's it for us. Stay cheerful. It's our duty. See you Monday. Hey, welcome to Hannity. Great news for the United States of America. The economy is booming. After months of projections, the second quarter GDP numbers are officially in with over 4% growth. In other words, our economy is now moving at its fastest pace in four years. In moments, we're going to explain what this means for you. Also, we're going to highlight the president's historic economic track record that the rest of the media, the Democrats, are ignoring. And the days of Obama's pathetic economic stagnation are now officially over. Now, today on my radio show, I did interview the president about the roaring economy and so much more. We'll play the highlights. Plus, the countdown to the midterms is on. We are going to show you how the left's new low keeps getting lower and lower and lower. Good news for the country. Oh, that's bad news for them. Also tonight, more progress to report on North Korea. Today, dictator Kim Jong-un, he kept one of his promises. He actually returned dozens of cases containing the remains of U.S. servicemen that were killed abroad during the Korean War. A serious breakthrough, a promise kept. Sit tight, stay tuned. It's time for tonight's breaking news, Friday edition, opening monologue. All right, as a candidate and as president, Donald Trump long promised to spur the American economy and get growth rates back to 4%. Many on the left, many in the media, many so-called experts and economists, they mocked him. They said it could not happen. They said a growth rate around 2% was the new normal in America. The haters, the left-wingers, the Democrats are all proven wrong. Today, the Commerce Department officially announced that the second quarter GDP grew at a whopping pace of 4.1%. That's more than double the average yearly growth under Obama. In fact, under President Obama, the yearly GDP growth never even made 3%. The first president in U.S. history not to have a year of 3% GDP growth. Now, this is just a key piece of an American economy that is now booming everywhere you turn. The overall unemployment rate now is 4%, a 17-year low. To put it in perspective, perspective, the average unemployment rate under Obama, 7.4%. Under President Trump, African-American unemployment is at its now lowest rate ever at 6.5%, a record low Hispanic unemployment rate in America, their lowest recorded at 4.6%. Women in the workforce, even lower at 4%. And by the way, 14 states have record low unemployment. Consumer confidence at a 17-year high. Home ownership rate is up significantly. The amount of Americans on food stamps is down by millions. And there are now literally more jobs available in America than there are people on unemployment. Basically an economic miracle turnaround. Oh, yeah, and we're negotiating better trade deals all over the world. No trade wars. Oh, including this week when President Trump and the head of the European Union agreed to push for zero tariffs, barriers, and subsidies between the two trading partners. So just think, just a short time ago, under Obama, 
He gave us 13 million more Americans on food stamps, 8 million more Americans in poverty, the lowest labor participation rate since the 70s, the worst home ownership rate in 51 years, the worst recovery since the 40s. And on top of this, oh yeah, he took on more debt than every other president before him combined. Earlier today on my radio show, President Trump had this to say about America's record-setting economy. Take a listen. A big factor, though, Sean, was regulation, and obviously a big factor was the taxes. But a lot of this, uh, really, the taxes are going to help in the future. I look so forward to seeing the next quarter because this is so sustainable. This is going to go for a long time. For the economy, we can go a lot higher. And, you know, people don't talk. We have $21 trillion in debt. When this really kicks in, we'll start paying off that debt like it's water. Uh, we will start paying that debt down with $21 trillion, a number that is, you know, unthinkable. Uh, but that will go down very quickly because the numbers with growth and the kind of growth that we've produced, the 4.1 can actually go higher. I look forward to seeing next quarter because I think that the 4.1 is just a stepping stone. But when we make good trade deals, Sean, it's going to have a huge impact on GDP growth. Mm -hmm. And the numbers will be so big that you'll actually start paying down debt in very large chunks. It'll go quickly. Oh, bad news for the media and Democrats. Oh, because they want their power back. And the more successful America is, the chances of them getting that power back, yeah, it gets reduced every day. Now, there's huge quarterly GDP growth. It is great news for every American. Not only does it prove that tax cuts have actually worked and always work, but it's also clear evidence that the president is keeping his promises, something that's rare in Washington to you, the American people. It's important to keep in mind, we are now approaching the most important midterm elections in our country's history, as far as I'm concerned. By the way, Steve Bannon will talk about it later, but without a doubt, Democrats, they'll be up to the same old predictable dirty tricks and tactics. To them, it doesn't matter what the economy is doing. Instead, they want you to believe that Republicans are monsters, that they're racist and sexist and misogynic and, and xenophobic and homophobic, Islamophobic, that they want dirty air and water even though they drink it and breathe it. And they want to uh, literally throw granny over a cliff and they want to kill children. Earlier today, I asked the president about that and so much more. Here's his answer. The Democrats want to raise everybody's taxes. They want to give back these massive tax cuts that we got and reforms that are so good for everybody, but the tax cuts. So they want to raise people's taxes. They want to open up borders. They want to get rid of ICE. I mean, the things they're doing are so destructive. We're not, we won't have a country. So uh, they want they want their crumbs back. Well. Yeah, they yeah, want no, their crumbs uh, back. To, they want open money. borders. They want Obamacare. Yeah. They want to impeach you, and they want to stop all investigations into deep corruption. All right, the president's right. And ahead of the midterms, it is very clear that the left, they really have no plan to improve the lives of, oh, the forgotten men and women. We lived eight years under economic failure and stagnation. What, you want to take it back? You want the crumbs back? Really? You want to impeach Trump? Is that what you want to do? You want to preserve the disaster of Obamacare where every American didn't keep their doctor and didn't keep their plan and they're not paying less? They want to eliminate ICE. They want open borders. Oh, they want to stop the investigations into what was the biggest abuse of power by the deep state in American history. So with 101 days to go as these midterms get close, the rhetoric their conduct is only going to get worse and worse and worse. And, of course, they're willing accomplices in the media that just echo each other. Now, President Trump's successful presidency is literally driving them insane. By the way, this week they were really in rare form. Total insanity. They wake up every day. How can I hate Trump today? Take a look. So I am calling on everyone right now who understands what's at stake, who understands who Kavanaugh is in a moral moment, there is no bystanders. You are either complicit in the evil, you are either contributing to the wrong, or you are fighting against it. Jay-Z, prolific rapper, prolific philosopher, I'm taking a quote from him, you know, Putin has got Donald Trump big pimping, pimping, big pimping Donald Trump right now. It was Donald Trump working with advanced knowledge to be part of an international conspiracy. No. He was furious because he found out Melania was watching CNN 
instead of Fox, which, when you think about it, is probably her way of cheating on him. And this week in person, the harassment of Trump allies continued. First, it was, you know, Secretary Nielsen. Then it was White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders and Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and his wife, the Transportation Secretary. And now, yeah, now they're going after Sean Spicer because he has a book out that people want to buy. And on Wednesday, literally shouted down by one of these leftists at a book signing. Take a look. Hey, Sean, you're a real piece of garbage. And I hope you look around and you see all these empty seats and you realize even in New York City, people will not come and pay money to hear you speak. I've read the reviews. It's a garbage book. You're as stupid as you look. It's a garbage book and you're a garbage person. You lied as press secretary. I've read the reviews. The Wall Street Journal called you a liar. I wish I was wrong in this prediction, but you can expect this kind of behavior, this kind of rhetoric from the left, and it's only going to get worse and worse as we get closer to the midterms in November. Why? Because they want their power back at all costs, and they think the louder they get, the more effective they'll be. And finally tonight, we end with some positive developments out of the Korean Peninsula. Kim Jong-un, he did keep his commitment to President Trump in the U.S., and he did return the remains of U.S. servicemen killed decades ago in the Korean War. Listen to this. We did meet. We had a great meeting, a very, very great meeting. I mean, I think you could have lost 50 million people more. Uh, if you think that Seoul is 28 million people, it's right on the border. You know, people say hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands. We're, we're talking about 50, 60, 100 million people could have been wiped out and lost. We had a great meeting, uh, historic, and among other things, where the remains are starting to come back. Missiles have been stopped. We don't have rockets and missiles shot over Japan. Uh, the hostages, we got them back. Even before I left, we got them back. Uh, nuclear testing, no more. Uh, rocket testing, no more. So many things have changed. And, you know, uh, one thing, all of their propaganda material and the propaganda, which has been up for years, propaganda, the signs, the music, it's all stopped. It's all been taken down. So many positive things have happened. And, you know, we have time. We have, there's no rush. I, I told my people, don't rush. We have sanctions on. We haven't taken any sanctions off. And uh, we hope, uh, I look forward to the time when we do take the sanctions off because when that happens a lot of good things will have happened on the other side oh and he's not try, trying to bribe a dictator this is more tangible progress out of the president's diplomatic efforts with little rocket man kim jong-un and at the very least an important moment for all of those who did lose their loved ones in the korean war and tonight the negotiations to denuclearize the korean peninsula continue and we'll update you on everything that transpires but in the meantime no rockets have been fired since december over japan is not a threat to the region uh... it looks like fire and fury and my buttons bigger than yours and ours actually works is actually working oh and we did get our hostages out and there was the dismantling of one of the nuclear test sites here with reaction the author of the number one New York Times bestseller this week, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. Number one on the New York Times bestseller list. You know her as Judge Jeanine Pirro. And the author of another New York Times bestseller, The Geraldo Show, Fox News correspondent at large, Geraldo Rivera. Uh, congratulations to Hi. both of you. Uh, Judge Jeanine, good for you. Um, we're proud of you and, and so well deserved. I know how hard you work. Geraldo, your book has been out. Look at Geraldo, such a great... You know, Geraldo, that brings something to my mind. You've always said, and we disagree on immigration, and I don't want to hear it today about immigration, although you agree <laughs> with the wall. You do agree. But you actually keep saying, and I'm, I love this about you, even though that we don't agree on everything. You keep saying, I want this president to succeed because I want my country to succeed. I don't feel that from the Democratic Party. They're not happy today about these GDP numbers. You know, they would applaud if the president stumbled on the sidewalk, I, I think, Sean. They, there is a hatred of Donald Trump that is something that is almost unprecedented. It is extraordinary how people are actively rooting for the president and the presidency to fail. I, I think that it is 
uh, it's selfish, it's narcissistic, it's, it's so uh, uh, pedestrian and, and, and partisan. It, it really is uh, one reason uh, politics is, has such a foul stench. But I think that the president could help himself more. You started the program with these great economic numbers. The thing about these economic numbers, the rising tide is lifting all ships. Americans are doing better than ever. Wages are going up. There are more jobs than, than people seeking jobs. But, but at its core, this is also a tremendous civil rights uh, uh, movement by, by President uh, Trump. Bingo. He Very is important. doing more for the inner city. He's doing more for the inner city than all of the liberals and the wishy-washy and come on and socialism and all the rest of it. Black unemployment historic lows, Hispanic unemployment at, at historic lows. Were I on the president's team, I would say this is what you focus on. Say this every day, every single day. We're not getting nuked from North Korea. And, and look what we're doing for the cities. Look what we're doing for the constituency that voted for my opponent. We are doing more than all of these liberal programs combined, John. You know, Geraldo's right on the money, but I, I've said, Judge, that if the president cured cancer at this point, seriously, I, I'm, I really believe it. If the president cured cancer and gave every American $30 million, the media and Democrats would still hate this guy. If he adopted their agenda, that, which failed, they would still hate him. Well, there's no question, Sean, that the, the hatred toward this president is unparalleled in American history. And there is not one metric that has suffered under this president. We are better off in every possible metric. I remember when President Obama said, all manufacturing jobs, that's a thing of the past. We now have 400,000 new manufacturing jobs in this country. We now have unemployment, and I won't repeat all of the good things that have been said. But here's the truth. You know, Geraldo says that president should talk more about, you know, this civil rights issue of helping the people who have been forgotten. But the truth is, Geraldo, he can talk about it from the highest mountains and the press wouldn't report it. But the American people instinctively understood that this was a man, this Donald Trump, who had never run for, for any office in his life, instinctively understands the plight of the hardworking American man and woman. And so we gave him a chance to use his words. We had nothing to lose. He said, what do you and have to lose? And right. every metric has improved. That's right. You know, and, and that's what the American that, people is... think. And, you know, every day he takes incoming. And every day I realize more than ever, this man is a force of nature. He can, he can handle anything and keep fighting for us. You know, Geraldo, this is a really good point. Every election, it's the same thing from the Democrats. Racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you know, throw granny over the cliff, scare Americans. You know, give me one idea that Democrats, besides impeachment, keeping Obamacare, open borders, and they want their crumbs back. One <laughs> idea that they're offering the American people that would that would they would deserve us to go back to what to Obama's 13 million additions to food stamps and 8 million more in poverty what are they offering well uh, Medicaid for everybody which is a wonderful idea public uh, oh, yeah we could pay education that for that at too. the college level for everybody free free college uh, you know, free housing great ideas. free daycare the problem free, is free, as, free. as, uh, as the the, prominent, uh, the apparent uh, nominee for the uh, Democratic congressional seat in the Bronx and Queens, uh, Ms. Uh, Ocasio-Cortez, uh, she, her platform is wonderful. It, it spells out a utopian socialist uh, universe. The reality, going back to what I said, is that capitalism is the best engine for lifting people out of poverty and into the middle classes and, uh, and, and beyond. I, I, I think that you have to stress those things, but I also think that it is sophomoric of us to avoid the fact that a lot of the hatred directed at, at President Trump, some of it is self-inflicted, and I could talk about that if you want, but a lot of it also is the, the fear. You remember the huge demonstrations the day after the inauguration by women wearing pink hats everywhere. Their problem was the fear that the president would curtail the rights granted under Roe v. Wade. It is a, a, a sticky subject. Nobody likes to talk about it. We kind of roll our eyes. You don't want to hear the other side of it. One of the advantages I've had being at Fox, being with you, is I respect your point of view on that. But I can't say that that is generally held. And there's a fear that the president will no, stack but I respect, the you know, Supreme the, Court. It, this and is proof, by the way. 
we become best friends and we disagree. We'll go out and have a drink and a bite to eat and argue, but we're friends. Because I believe in the sincerity. I believe in your Same sincerity. With you. you want the I country to be better. I believe that you're an honest person. Absolutely. And Judge, that's missing everywhere. I, I am seeing such a level of dishonesty. Uh, here's the thing. They're not going to focus on the so-called news channels about all this success, which is, as Geraldo is rightly saying, we're changing. The forgotten men and women that have been left behind are now getting more opportunity than they've ever had. And I'm the guy that started as the dishwasher. So I identify with that with with people that are struggling because I've struggled for 20 years of my life, 25 years. Well, you know, and, and, you know, when you talk about, Geraldo, I was in that march in Washington, and thank goodness I, there were two Navy SEALs with me, retired, and at, at the very least I was protected, but the hate was, was, it was palpable. And when I asked people in that, in that uh, parade or whatever, the march protest, what they were protesting, they just hated Donald Trump. Look, female unemployment, Sean, you talked about it at the beginning of the show. It's at 4%. And you, know, you look at Ivanka Trump. This is a woman who has spent her adult life trying to promote women as entre uh, entrepreneurs. Look at, what, and look at how they treat her. And finish her. And, look at and, how they treat yeah, Ivanka. Yeah, and hashtag and Barry. grab your wallet. And the, and the granddaughter of the president hey, right. for crying out loud. All of them. L look, here's the bottom line. America is better off. The left is trying to shut down the right. I've had my own experiences with it. They call Let us me... fascists. But the fascism is when there's only one way of thinking and everyone else has to be shut down. Last word, Geraldo. I think what happened to Ivanka and her decision uh, to give up her businesses is absolutely shameful. Uh, she and her husband, Jared, have worked so hard for free for the country and for people to attack their businesses by sabotage the way they have, I think is really, yep. really regrettable. Some of these people working in Washington will pay more money, literally in lawyers, than they could pay. All right, don't forget, Judge Jeanine tomorrow night, 9 Eastern. And when we come back, former Trump White House strategist Steve Bannon, 101 days away from the election, Jim Jordan, and the rest of my exclusive interview with Roseanne Barr.